In this video, we're going to be creating a system where when we approach a cube, we're going to change its material so that it glows in space. This is going to go over the basics of materials, emissive materials, and material instances so that we can create versions of the same material based off of parameters that we set. In preparation for this tutorial, I have created a new blueprint. This blueprint contains a cube, which is going to serve as our static mesh, and it also contains a box, which is going to act as our trigger volume, which we're going to use later. To create a new material, you're going to right click and you're going to create a new basic asset called a material. I'm going to call this my tutorial material and I'm going to open this up. Inside here is everything you need to make your material whatever you want it to be, as long as you know where to look. It all relates to this big node right here. For today, we're making something that's glowing. To get started, we're going to go to the palette in the top right corner and we're going to look for something called a constant three vector. Once you find that, you can drag it into the scene and this is going to be what controls the base of your color. So if we double click onto this black section here, that's going to bring up a color wheel. So now we can choose exactly what we want for the color. So let's say that I want to do a nice green color here. We can see that changing this to green is going to change our variable up here to green. And if we hit OK, we also can see that this doesn't change our preview in the top left corner. But if we connect this top node to our base color in the material, we now have a proper update. Now to make this material glow, we're going to right click and we're going to look for the multiply node. We can add that to our scene and what this is going to do is it's going to take some sort of base and multiply it by a constant. The base is going to be our color that we've established, and the constant can be whatever we want. But to prepare for the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a constant. That's going to give us a lot more control and you'll see specifically why I want this level of control in about a minute. But for now, we can connect this to the multiply node and we're going to set this to be, say, by 100. So now we're going to have a strong glow. and We can connect this multiply node to our emissive color. And now we can see that in our preview screen, we have a really bright object. So now at the base of this material setup, we're going to parameterize this so that we can make variants of this this material for use in games. To do that, I'm going to right click on this color node here and I'm going to convert this to a parameter. It's going to prompt me to name this parameter and I'm going to call this our color. And I'm going to do the same thing for this constant down here. I'm going to right click, convert to parameter, and I'm going to call this my brightness. So now inside of this parameters tab, we'll see that we have both a color that we're able to quickly choose and change if we were to want to, and we can quickly change our brightness to make it less bright or more bright, depending on what we're looking to go for here. But now what's important is if I save this and go back into my content drawer, we can see that our material looks ready. But even better than this is if I right click and hit create material instance, I'm gonna call this my flat material. And if I open this up, we can see that we can quickly adjust anything that we parameterized in the previous step. So let's say for this flatness here, I want this to have a brightness of zero, but I want it to use the same color. So now we have a color without any brightness. And if I want to do that one more time, I can right click on my base material, create a material instance that I'm going to call my bright material. And let's say I want this brightness to be even more bright and I'll make it like 300. And again, I'll save that now. So now let's take this a step further. Let's go into that blueprint we created earlier. Now let's go into our cube and we're going to set the material of that cube to be our flat material. That's going to change the color of this. And now if I compile and save and go back to my map, we can see that all of the instances I created also change their color, which is perfect. That's what we were looking for. But now let's take this a step further and go into our event graph. I created a basic function that's going to see if we have overlapped with something, and that is specifically our box collider. Then we are going to change our cubes material to be our bright material. So that being that glowing material that we had before. So now if I compile and save this and I go back to my map, I'm just going to separate these so that they don't trigger their own brightness. And now I'm going to hit play. So now as I approach this first cube in the middle here, as I get close enough, you see it gets bright and it kind of turns itself on there. And then when I go to the left one, the same thing will happen and same thing when I go to the right. So this can be used for you to create signals to the player whether or not they're going in the right direction, but the options are limitless. And that is how you can go and create a glowing material within your Unreal Engine 5 projects, and then iterate on that to create different versions of it to fit your needs. If you found this helpful, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.